Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Pace Driver Spotlight. Today, we're going to go up to Perry, Georgia, where we find 14-year-old legend driver Hudson Bulger. Hudson, what's going on this evening? Nothing. Just been at the race shop. Been at the race shop. Anything exciting happened there? Um, no, we just had our meeting for 2022. 2022. You know what? A lot of people don't realize how much work goes into planning and strategy for what's going to come next year. But I'm impressed because we're we're the first of November and you guys are already meeting and talking about 2022. So thumbs up for that. <laughs> So I want to start off with some breaking news, and that is you have a brand new sponsor in Can-Am. So how exciting is that? You know, it's exciting. Very exciting. Well, I got some cool products, man. I was I was actually on your website and kind of cruising through some of the products. So, so I got to ask you, of all the products that they have, if you could pick one and have that magically show up in your garage tomorrow, what would it be? Definitely a Maverick X3. A Maverick X3. So for somebody like myself that doesn't know what that is, give us a short little description of, of why that thing is so cool. Well, it's got about 205 horsepower. It's, you know, they're like, almost feels like a race car almost. They're like off-road high performance. Yeah, that's what I started to say. I said, from a race car driver, it's got to it's got to be a lot of horsepower, and you are you answered that question right off the bat. So, um, so let's move in and let's talk a little bit about um, you as a race car driver. And so, give us a short little history of your racing experience. I know, like a lot of young kids, you didn't start racing when you were really really young. So, give us a little breakdown of what's been going on over the last couple of years. So, last year was my first year as my rookie season, and this year, we're really focusing on like fine tuning where I need I could be better on the track. And last year, we were just getting started; we didn't really know anything about racing. Right, and so you know that that's tough. You know, anytime that you're a rookie, I don't care if you're going from go karts or quarter midgets or whatever. But you know, you you kind of jump right in the middle of it here because you know you you started off in what I consider as one of the very toughest. Um, you know, series that's out there. And that's the INX Young Lions series. And there, there's a lot of people out there that thinks that that is one of the best steps in the development cycle. So tell us a little bit about the Young Lions um, and, and what is it like to drive one of those cars? Well, it's very competitive and you know, it's fun. I think you can only be like 16 to be able to drive it. So it's like around each other's age. So there's not a big age gap. So now the legend car runs both on the oval and the road course. Have you, and I know you've done a lot of, of oval racing. You did that at Atlanta, you did it at Lanier, um, and some other tracks that are out there. But have you run have you run the legend car on the road course yet? No, sir. I think we it's definitely on the schedule now. All right. Well, you know, you got to get good on the road course, because if you look and see, you know, what NASCAR is doing right now, I mean, they're running trucks, they're running Xfinity, they're running, you know, the Cup Series, and, and they're adding multiple road courses. I think next year, the, the story is that there's going to be like eight races that are going to be running the road course. So if you get really good at the road course, that's going to give you a major advantage as you start to move up the ladder. So Let's talk about this year a little bit. Um, tell us what your most memorable moment was from the year. And, and is, there, is there a favorite race that you that you had that really stands out? Um, probably going to Lanier just because, you know, the track there. It's fun. Just going to a different track because you've only been to three different tracks. It was exciting to do something new. Yeah. So Lanier, is that's pretty close to your hometown, isn't it? It's like almost three hours away. Three hours? Well, it's closer than Charlotte. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not as close as Atlanta. Is Atlanta Atlanta closer for you? Um. Yeah, it's close. Okay. So I always like to ask this question. What is the funniest thing that's ever happened to you at a racetrack? Probably one time a driver threw a bumper at my car. <laughs> He threw up on top of your car? 
No, he just like came past the fence and she threw it at my car. Oh, okay. I thought you said somebody threw up on your car. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So what tracks have you competed at this year? Um, Cordell, which is Chris Mashworth Park, and then Atlanta and Lanier. And Lanier. So let, let's go to let's talk a little bit about Chris Motorsports Park. You didn't go visit the watermelon patch, did you? No. <laughs> okay. That's a good thing. So everybody sooner or later visits the watermelon patch. So the one thing I'll tell you is if you got one of the three wheelers or got one of those cool Can-Am deals um, and you're out there, just go ahead and drive out there and just say, okay, now I can say that I visited the watermelon patch and I definitely don't want to do it under race conditions. Yes, sir. All right. So I, I like that racetrack. It's fast. It's really fast there. And, it, and it's something, it's something about the fact that, you know, I think the good thing is, is there's no walls. Once you get into turn one and then into the entrance of turn four or the exit of turn four, there's no walls, but you can get off into the grass. And I've yeah. seen that happen a lot there. And that, that's got to be exciting, especially at the speeds that you guys are running. Yep. So I got a, a question is, so you, you talked about Atlanta, you talked about Lanier, you talked about Chris Motorsports Park. Um, do you have a favorite track of those? Probably Atlanta. Atlanta? Definitely Atlanta. Well, I know that's a big track. Tell me, what do you like about that? What makes that your favorite track? Well, it's pretty small and it's just like very challenging to pass and stuff. And Lanier and Cordell, they're more spread out, you know, big bank tracks. So you just like, I don't know. I feel like there's more, it's more intense in Atlanta. Yeah. So let me ask you, is Atlanta, do they actually run it like on the front straightaway of Atlanta Motor Speedway and do like they do at Charlotte? Yes, sir. All right. Well, that's got to be pretty cool to look up there and go, oh my gosh, you know, I'm running on some pavement here that, you know, the cup guys run on. And I mean, there's a lot of racing going on in Atlanta. And you look up there and you think, gosh, if this thing was full of, you ever go around there and think, oh, the place is full of fans. You want to get up and do some burnouts and stuff like that? <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So can you share with the viewers how fast do these little legend cars actually go? Well, I would say everybody it depends on the track because Atlanta, they're running about somewhere around 60 miles an hour probably but then Cordy I think it gets in like 90 something miles an hour yeah now you might be sitting there going oh well, it's not that big a deal you know a race car doing 90 miles an hour that's not very fast well here's what I want you to know if you've never been in one of these little cars these things are so close to the ground but let me tell you what 90 miles in one of those cars feels like like a couple hundred miles an hour in your car so um, if you're ever out someplace going down the highway, and again, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you do this, but if you're on a little road someplace and you're doing like 40, 50 miles an hour, so open up your car door and kind of look down real quick and you'll get that feel of, of the sensation of what it's like to go that fast, that close to the ground. So 90 miles an hour, lightweight car, what powers a legend car? Um, uh, Yamaha FZ and I motor. Now, is this just a regular Yamaha motor, or do you guys do some, like, special tuning to it? I think they do something at U.S. Legends car. They, like, I don't know if they make it have more power or less power. I think it ends up having, like, 125 horsepower. Yeah. So, and that's one thing, if you guys are not familiar with the, the Legend car series, these cars come out of almost like the same kind of factory, if you would, and everybody's running the same identical things or supposed to be. Um, and so yeah. it all puts it, 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 look at the smile. He's like, yeah, it's supposed to be. <laughs> but uh, it really puts that in the hands of the driver. Um, but that's, again, that's a lot, of, a lot of horsepower to weight ratio. So are you ready to take the next step and get behind the wheel of a light model? Yes, sir, definitely. I'm very excited. You're very excited. Um, you got your eye on a car? Do you have a car being built? What's uh, what's the story there? Yes, sir. They have one being built right now. I think probably 
by the by the time this year, I should at least ran a couple races. All right, cool. I can't wait for that. Um, so let's talk about that transition. And what do you think your biggest challenge will be going from a legend car into a full body late model? I know it's one thing is you're not going to be sitting in the center of the car. There's going to be a lot of car to your right that you're probably not used to. Yes, sir. That, you know, it's going to be a bigger car, more horsepower. And like legend cars, you just, as soon as they throw the green flag, you just go straight for the, for the lead. And then late models, I kind of watch them. They kind of hold back and save their stuff. You know? Yeah, you got it. That's going to be hard for me to do. Absolutely. You got to learn to save your tire. So, you know, the cool thing about that is that um, I think you're going to continue to work with Chris Delbeck. And that's got to be a big plus for you to have somebody like that as a mentor. And uh, do you see that as a major advantage for you? Yes, sir, I do. All right. So what does the 2020 season look like? You know, you're going to you're going to possibly do some legend car. Uh, I know you're going to race full time in the legend car. You're going to do a little bit of late model racing. Uh, but is there anything else that's on your on your board for next year? Um, no, sir, not, I don't know, just going to different tracks, new tracks, stuff like that. All right, cool. So what does Hudson do when you're not racing? Pretty much just hunt and fish. So hunt and fish. So I've seen a couple of posts that you've done online about the fishing. So let's talk about fishing for just a little bit. Where do you like to go and what's your what's your most favorite fish to go fishing for? Um, I definitely have a favorite place to go is St. George, Florida, St. George okay. Island. And favorite fish. That's hard. I don't really I don't really have one as long as I'm catching fish. As long as you're catching you know what? Me and you could go fishing together then because that's the way I am. I don't care what I'm catching as long as I'm catching something. But, man, I ain't got a lot of patience to go out there and like, people be like, well, I'm fishing all day, but I didn't really catch anything. But, boy, it was good to be out on the water. And I'm like, man, that is not for me. So I'm with you, man. I want to be catching something if I'm, if I'm out there doing that. So we have a little game that we're going to play, and it's called Rapid Fire. I'm going to ask you six questions in 30 seconds. Are you ready to play? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is easy. All right. So here we go. What's your favorite food? Pizza. Pizza. What's your favorite movie? Tally Nights. Favorite band? Uh, I don't have one. You don't have a favorite band? All right. We got to get you a favorite band. Okay. <laughs> Who's your favorite race car driver? Uh, probably Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott. And your favorite non-racing sport? Fishing counts fishing. Fishing could count, but mostly it would be like you like football, basketball, baseball, or? Probably football. Football, who's your favorite team? Um, college, Georgia. Call it Georgia. <laughs> so the big Georgia-Florida game, everybody looks for that. Georgia, Alabama, Georgia. You know, and you guys are ranked number one right now, right? Yes, sir. Okay, last question. Favorite subject in school? Um, math. You know what? What is it about math? Every race car driver that you ask, what's your favorite subject? I've never had one tell me English or theater. It's always math, which is a good thing because if you'll be around race cars and engineering and stuff like that, you got to be good at math or you're going to be in trouble. Yes, sir. All right, so where do you see yourself in the next five years? If we fast forward, now think about this for a minute. If we fast forward to 2027, what's Hudson doing? Um, Hopefully something with racing. Hopefully something racing. Well, we got to get yeah. you a blueprint. we got to get you a plan out there because I want you to be able to say, I'm going to be in the truck series. or Yeah, uh, probably something like that. Truck series would be cool. Okay. We're just about out of time. So would you like to give a shout out to the people and sponsors that make all this happen for you? Um, yes, sir. Definitely. You know, Can-Am, Byron Power Sports, my parents, Chris Delbeck, Brett Reagan, pretty much it. 
All right. Well, very good. Well, Hudson, thanks for being uh, on this edition of Race Face Spotlight. We look forward to checking back with you the first part of 2022. And if you want to stay connected with Hudson, visit his website at HudsonBowlerRacing.com. Make sure to check out his fan zone. Sign up for his newsletter. You can also get behind the wheel as Hudson starts his new Driving Five podcast with Tom ba Baker. Make sure to like his Facebook page. And one last thing, there's a free gift that Hudson would like to give you when you stop by the website, and that's a free membership into his Speed Zone Mall. Now, I can tell you one thing. I don't know a lot of young drivers that have their own mall. So stop in, get connected with him, make sure that you take advantage of that free gift. Well, that's it for this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Hudson, thank you for being our guest and good luck in 2022. If you've missed any of our interviews, check out raceface.tv on demand. Make sure to check back with us next week as we'll travel out west and check in with ARCA driver, Joey East. Until then, go out there, have a great race week, I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching. Good night, Hudson. Good night. Thank you.